Image generation has truly come a long way in the past two years. Recently, papers are leveraging the power of diffusion models to generate truly realistic images. This work, DALI2, has been going rounds in social media. The paper actually refers to the work as unclip, as the model converts the text embeddings of the clip model back into images. The results are mind-blowing. So I sat down with this paper to understand what's going on and what has been done to achieve such impressive results. The paper comes from OpenAI and DALI2 seems to be a combination of two networks, namely a prior and a decoder network, somewhat like a encoder-decoder architecture. So let's dive deeper into DALI2, look at the model architecture and the results presented. training, also known as CLIP, learns the pairing between an input image and the text snippets such that, given an image, it predicts which one of the output in a set of thousands of randomly sampled text snippets was actually paired with the image in the dataset. It does it by learning a mapping between the input image and the corresponding text. As a result, it gives as output the embeddings or the feature representations ZI and ZT corresponding to the image and the text respectively. This paper, Unclip, uses the trained clip model to generate both image and text embeddings. This is my interpretation of the DALI2 architecture. It consists of a prior network and a decoder network. While we try in this unclip stack, we first freeze the weights of the clip model so that it just acts as an embedding network and produces the embeddings for the text caption and the input image. The prior network takes as input the text embeddings ZT and takes the image embeddings ZI at the output so that during training, it learns the mapping between the two embeddings ZI and ZT. The decoder network takes as input the image embeddings ZI and converts it back into an image. The decoder network optionally takes the captions directly as input instead of taking in just the image embeddings. So now that we know the main components of unclip or the prior and the decoder network, let's look at the decoder architecture first and then look at the architecture of the prior. The decoder is a diffusion model. More specifically, they use the Glide diffusion model that was introduced in 2021 by OpenAI. They modify the Glide to take four extra tokens and they combine these tokens along with the text encoder of the Glide. To help with the training, they randomly crop the clip embeddings 10% of the times and the text captions 50% of the times while training. Plus, they use two upsampler models to gradually move from a low resolution of 64 by 64 to higher resolution of 256 by 256. And they use another upsampler model to finally arrive at a resolution of 1024 by 1024. And it is at this resolution that they have presented the results in the paper. As an additional trick, they crop the training images to one fourth of the output target size and train with that instead of using the entire image as the input. As we saw in our method, the prior produces the image embeddings ZI by taking as input the text embeddings ZT. For the prior, they experiment with two architectures, namely the auto-regressive prior and a diffusion prior. When it comes to auto-regressive prior, they use the age-old principal components analysis or PCA to reduce the dimensionality of the clip embedding ZI from 1000 odd dimensions to 300 odd dimensions. Applying such a technique seems to increase the training cell stability. Additionally, whenever they want to include the optional text caption, they use it as a prefix to the sequence. In terms of the model, they use a text transformer with the 24 blocks as the encoder and a 24 block transformer 
for the decoder. When considering the diffusion model as the prior, they use a decoder-only transformer. The input seems to consist of encoded text, the text embedding, the embedding of the diffusion timestamp, as we now have a diffusion model and the embedding of the noisy image. On the output side, we have the embedding of the noise-free image, ZI. During inference, whenever we are sampling from the train model, they generate two embeddings, ZI, and use the embedding with the highest dot product with the text embedding, ZT, and discard the other. As we all know by now, the diffusion model is a much better choice compared to the autoencoder or GANs when it comes to image quality. That indeed seems to be the case even here. Now that we have seen how to train the prior and the decoder together, let's see how we can play with the decoder to produce fancy images. So to obtain the images, the decoder needs a combination of the image embedding directly obtained from clip, which is ZI and the encoding XT, which is a representation obtained that encapsulates all the residual information that is needed to be input to the decoder. This encapsulation is inspired by the DDIM, which stands for Denoising Diffusion Implicit Models, Latin space, which was introduced in this paper, Diffusion Models B, GANs on Image Synthesis. And so this space is deterministic with the latent noise vector xt for a given input image x. So now all that means is that if you input a given image x into this DDIM, it always produces a single vector xt, and that's pretty consistent for a given image x. Now with the combination of these two vectors, we are able to manipulate the input image to generate different variations. So these are some of the examples of images generated by manipulation. The generated images clearly make a lot of sense and the semantics make a lot of sense too. For example, the OpenAI logo resembles the original logo but with a lot of variations at the same time. What excites me even more is that the clock shows different times and different images. Now that we're able to manipulate images using the latent vector, we can also go from the latent vector representation of one image, say ZI1, to another image ZI2. Using a slurp function, we can sweep along the surface of the sphere that represents the two uh, images, and we can generate images that are a combination of both the images. That's what is pretty much shown in this figure, where we go gradually from the image on the left to the image on the right as we sweep across the sphere. Uh, for the latent, latent representation ZI1 to ZI2. A huge advantage of using CLIP is that the text and image embeddings ZT and ZI share the same latent space. And so we should be able to control the images generated using the text input, which means a slight but semantically different input text should be able to generate equivalent images and that's what we see precisely in this figure. So we are able to control uh, the weather or the look of the image just by saying that a photo of the landscape in winter and then if we say a photo of a landscape in fall, we typically see the variation in, in the weather condition in the image. While we were looking into the prior, we mentioned about the ability to generate images with not only the output of the prior network, but also with both the text embeddings of the clip network directly or the text captions themselves. So it's fair to ask, why do we even need the prior network? In fact, generating without the prior network is more like the Glide architecture, which was a different paper. So here are the results that answer the question and clearly show a comparison of the images generated with all three sorts of inputs. The results clearly show that the unclip approach of using a prior network is the best compared to the other. The diversity and correlation of the text input seems to be much better while using the image embedding 
on the prior network compared to just using the caption or the text embedding. Now if we move on to the quantitative results, the FID scores also seem to prove the same point. Moreover, the study with human evaluators showed that the unclipped model with the diffusion prior has a lot of diversity compared to the autoregressive prior. In a different table, they also report the FID scores of unclip against different state-of-the-art methods. We notice that unclip has really impressive FID scores. So if you want to see more examples, the DALI2 website has tons of them and I encourage you to take a look at their website. Meanwhile, I'm signing off and I will see you in another video. Take care.